Martin's kindly pulled over to talk to us on his way to the Emirates for Arsenal versus Brighton. Martin, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm delighted to be in the company of two such eminent journalists as you two. And um, thank you for asking me to contribute this morning. Thank you very much, Martin. It's wonderful to hear from you. And you're still commentating, as I've just said, for channels all over the world. Well, that's quite a dramatic way of putting it, but I would expect you on this paper to put it that way. Um, I, I would say um, that the only thing I would say, and you're normally so accurate, that I didn't step down. I was stepped down, and um, I haven't retired. And uh, uh, I'm very grateful to some channels who have uh, um, decided that I've still got something to contribute. Please don't think that there's any uh, business about Sky at all. They gave me a wonderful run. I've got many friends there. I'll be watching it probably in the press room at the um, at the Emirates after the Arsenal Bryant game. I'll be watching uh, the coverage of uh, Liverpool against Manchester United, and it will bring back a lot of personal memories. And uh, I wish everybody well in the in the future. For Sky, they've done a wonderful deal with the, with the Premier League. I think that's guaranteed the future of the the whole company, let alone Sky Sports. So congratulations to all the friends I've left behind. Martin, hi, it's, it's Henry here. Great to hear your, your, your voice again. We, we miss you, you know, when we, we did, our paths don't cross. But Martin, what, can you tell me what makes a good commentator? Obviously, research, delivery, voice, contact. But that, you've always had the ability to know when to accelerate, when to go through the gears. Because I find some commentators go too early and they're getting excited in the centre circle, whereas you seem to time your run. Well, maybe that's experience, I don't know. But I think every commentator has, rather like a player, um, you have qualities, you could list the qualities of football that needs. And somebody will say, well, they're the best at um, the quickest, they're the best in the air, the strongest tackle. And I think if you look at all the top commentators, they've got a 10 out of 10 quality. Um, and, and they express things in different ways. Far be it for me to... Um, to look in detail at some excellent broadcasters who have succeeded me and and will go on for for a very long time. And and I wish them all well. They're all friends. We're all on the the same WhatsApp group, so to speak. Um, And uh, it's only a job that other people who do it who understand it, really. It's something that you never come away. can't be done perfectly, so you can never come away. Um, I'm sitting in my car now, uh, as you know, waiting to get on the train to the Emirates. And um, um, but sitting in my car, driving home from match after match after match, season after season after season, you're always thinking, well, why did I say that, or why didn't I say that? You think of the best lines afterwards. Um, but um, so it's it's something that you have to have a certain temperament to be able to um, be able to cope with it. I think. But the the one thing that probably binds us all together is the love of the game. Um, I think we can all see through people who come in, pass through, maybe using um, football broadcasting on a way to get somewhere else. Um, but the ones that um, apparently I said uh, sort of 30 years ago, um, what would I like to be doing um, for the rest of my career? And I, and I said, well, just let me keep going. And that's what I've been lucky enough to be able to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I've had this such a lucky lucky life doing what you guys do what loving the game watching the game yeah we're you know we don't uh, eliminate the negative and we we try to accentuate the positive it's not perfect Gareth Southgate I think had a wonderful expression when he got the England job about football's the most wonderful thing on the planet but the industry could uh, we could all have a good look at the industry and and there are things we don't like about it but when the ball's on the center spot and you've done your prep um, it's a real privilege to be holding the microphone Martin, when you let rip with emotion at the key moments, could you have an Aguero moment now with VAR lurking in the background? Yes, it's a really good question, Henry, because I think we all got together as a group of broadcasters with our bosses, really, to say, look, let's not be frightened of being wrong, you know, that the goal doesn't stand. Um, you know, it's a, it, it's it's a risk you have to take now, which you didn't have to take before. But no, I think if it... You know... You always knew, really, when there was no VAR, if there was a hint of offside about it or you saw a foul in the build-up, so you wouldn't have let rip then. Um, but now, um, I, I don't know, the, the goals get ruled out that you think are perfect goals for all sorts of um, intricacies in the laws that we could talk till um, 11 o'clock tonight about that. But um, So I think the answer is, 
you have to swallow it. If it goes wrong, don't beat yourself up. Um, you just go, well, actually, the goal doesn't stand. And we're back to whatever it is, and on we go. And, and I think we've learned to do that. Um, but the emotional moments are special, and it's, it's from the heart, you know. It's probably more from the heart than the head. Um, but it's just the, the the skill level. I honestly believe, guys, and i really thought about this. I Actually, on Tuesday, it's 70 years since I went to my first football match at my beloved Woking, and um, I'm popping to the ground to to see them, to, to stand on the spot where I actually stood. The ground's pretty much the same. Um, but I think in those 70 years, that football's the most watchable that it's ever been. I think that the skill, the fact the pitches are so perfect, uh, um, the refereeing is probably favouring the attacking players. Um, most of the coaches favour I call it T20 football now because, you know, it's, it's like um, a game where you've got 20 footballers on the pitch, no defenders, really, a couple of goalkeepers. <laughs> It's all attacking stuff, and it, it brings it. And we, we've got goals like we used to get in the 1950s. You got four all draws, and five stuff, three, yeah. and things like that. You know, Martin, I can't believe you're still dabbling in coaching. People will wonder how on earth you've fitted in. You're, you're apparently coaching at Dartford. You've done Wilkings. You say Kingstonian. How do you do this? What happens? Well, I, I normally work on a Sunday for Sky, and I was a non-league player. You know, funnily mm-hmm. enough, in your quiz question. My last game in the, in the old Eastman League was against Wickham Wanderers. So I knew that bit of it. <laughs> and um, uh, so I wasn't only playing a long time before um, we three met and things. I, when, when I crept into, crept into journalism in the early 1970s. So I, I, think I had to give up playing. I was 27, I think, to join the fraternity of the fourth estate and, and become a television commentator. So um, it's... Um, uh, it, it, for me, it's full circle. So, and I've, I've done it for 20 years with Alan Dowson. It's only Alan Dowson's fault. Anybody who wants to criticise me for doing it, Dowson is my mate, and um, and he's taking me along. I, I look after his back a little bit. And I make them run. That's one of the things that, that I, I learned from the Premier League training sessions that I am privileged to visit, and um, uh, we, we work on the fitness side. So it's fun. But we lost 4-0 yesterday, and it's not fun. Oh. And, Were you uh, facing the uh, axe? Um, well, I, I hope not. <laughs> now, one of the Bakers... If, sorry, if we go. do, we'll, we'll find another club if we do. We're not, we're not quitting on this, you know. I might be an old git in terms of birth certificate, but I've got a young heart. <laughs> and on that subject, on that subject, may, I meant to say this at the beginning, may I pass my personal um, sympathies and best wishes to Tom Locke here. Um, yeah. We have a, a dark, we have a bit of a connection with Charlton. And they're under 21s playing that round. And of course, Tom was at Charlton for a season. And uh, when we came in from this uh, very, very bad football result, to hear that put everything into perspective. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad the news looks good. And as I say, please, please, um, you know, pass on my best wishes as well. I know you're all doing the same. Yeah, Martin. Um, one of the biggest games you obviously have commentated on over the years is always the Liverpool Man United clashes. Now, <laughs> mm. forgive me, I presume you commentated on last season 7 0? I did. How did how, I, I, what I did you make of that game? Well, I was more, I, of course, it was um, a phenomenal discrepancy between two normally very close rivals. But of course, I had my my two professional children alongside me, Mr. Neville and Mr. Carragher, <laughs> who, were, who were saying, and they, it's a bit like having them in the back of the car, go, Dad, when, when do we get there? You know, it's that kind of uh, relationship. And um, they, of course, had massive, well, fun. It's not the right word for Gary, but. Um, but for Cara. So, um, yes, it was... I mean, you look at the recent games, I mean, there's been a 4-0, a 5-0, a 4-2 at Old Trafford. Um, it, it has gone Liverpool's way very strongly. And over the years of doing it for Sky, there were plenty of times that Man United won at Anfield. I remember Diego Forlan getting mm. two goals right um, really out of the blue for, for, um, for United to win a game at Anfield. So... And it's a fantastic rivalry. It's a special game for, to work on, as you guys know. And um, I think it transcends just football. There's two big metropolises, if that's the word, um, 35 miles apart. They rival on co- commerce, business, culture, you name it. They're, they're uh, head-to-head on it, and, and the football sums it up. And um, So there's a great domestic uh, attachment to it. And, of course, globally, it is probably the fixture. Mm. 
Camille Canada. Martin, if my maths is right, this time next year, December the 28th, that will be 50 years from your first commentary. Do you have one favourite game in that half century? Well, I do, because, um, and and there are lots of candidates, as a game... Um, the first of the Liverpool four Newcastle three. Sorry, Sean. No. The, um, um, the one with ended with Kevin Keegan draped over the other side, <laughs> of the and and, and um, Colin Moore closing in, and that was um, I, it. Was during the pandemic, Sky ran it again, and um, I have uh, one of my children with me uh, who heard me bang on about this game and never seen it. So we sat down to watch it, and I was thinking, well, it won't be as good as I remember it because these things, that's the way it goes. It was better, even better. Uh, it, was, it, it had everything from, um, you know, Liverpool scoring early and then they didn't lead again until Stan scored uh, in, in added time. Uh, it, it was a, a brilliant match and both were going for the title and neither of them won it. So um, there was a, a bit of frustration at the end of it. But I think they had, a, they had a rerun of the game, didn't they? The players mm. got together a few years ago and played, I think, up in Newcastle. And, and so it meant a lot. Um, and if I can, I can tell you one little story about it. In the, in the World Cup of uh, in Brazil in 2014, Stan was working probably for you guys, and I went up in the lift. Uh, very rare we have lifts at football grounds, but in, in São Paulo for the opening game, we went up in the lift, and, and we opened the lift. We were going up to the gantry, and then someone was coming into the lift to go down. It was Tino Aspria, and he looked at Colin Moore, and he went, "You cost me my Premier League winners' medal." How they, they couldn't have known that moment was going to happen. That was 2014, <laughs> as opposed to 1996. <laughs> it was um, that's that's for me. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to pick one of anything because I've been so lucky to see so much. But that's the one. Oh, and, Martin, and I wish I could say I wish I could say great memories, but <laughs> an eventful <laughs> choice, Martin, an eventful game, all all the same. 